Well, hello, listeners. Uh, welcome back to another part of our podcast uh, that we're doing on this special great series that we have going on, and it is getting more and more exciting. I'm here with uh, Pastor Dan again, and also Pastor Luke, who brought an awesome message last night. Hey, it's good to be with you all again this week, and uh, Pastor Luke, glad to have you with us today. Hey, it's awesome to be with you guys and just help to shed some light on wonderful subject of grace. Uh, so last night, Pastor uh, Luke, you brought an awesome word, and so I'm just looking forward into answering some of these questions uh, that kind of came out of that. Uh, the first one uh, is that we talked, uh, or you discussed uh, gifting and grace, and it sounded somewhat interchangeable. Can you clarify that? Yeah, I think if I was to go back and think of that again, because I wasn't intending on spending a lot of time on that, but I think that that was an important part for us to understand. So I would I would say it's not gifting and grace because grace is a gift. Um, what I would say is your giftedness versus your grace. So don't let your giftedness get in the way of your grace, so to yeah. say. And giftedness, I think, is just a natural propensity to do something. I mean, you think about what giftedness is. There are people that are just, they have a, a natural talent to do something well, like Michael Phelps was uh, has has a giftedness to be a swimmer. Why? Because of his genetics, his makeup, the way his body is. You know, are there people out there that just it's like no matter what you do, you, they're just gifted at that, or they have a giftedness towards that. And grace can step in on that, but a giftedness is a talent that is that each person has. I believe that that might come from hard work, that might come from practice, that might come from you know just putting a lot of effort into something. Whereas grace is something that you can't work for it's something that god gives to you it's a favor so when i say don't let your giftedness or your giftedness and your grace you know they're not interchangeable because i believe giftedness is something that we work for on our own but grace is something that god gives to us as a means of his favor a means of his love yeah that's good i think a good example uh to look at in the bible of that is moses you know here's a guy who was born and from the moment he was born the bible says that he was a beautiful child in the book of hebrews his parents saw something on his life and as he was raised in the house of Pharaoh, he was trained in the ways of Egypt, raised up to be a probably a military leader. Uh, he knew the economic systems of, of Egypt. He was trained in the ways of royalty and had probably natural leadership giftings and abilities and then things that he was trained up at. And when he saw his people being abused and mistreated and killed the Egyptian, buried him in the sand, yeah. and, and, and then when he's found out, he runs away from what his calling was, right. essentially, for 40 years to go to shepherd school in the desert. And, and the man was humbled. Yeah. Now God brings him back 40 years later with a grace on his life yeah, this time. Good. You know, uh, you think about it, here's, here's a guy who was a natural leader, but... It, he was telling God, I'm not the greatest guy, I can't speak, I, I stutter, that sort of a thing. Mm-hmm. And yet God used this man to deliver the nation, to speak to Pharaoh and to speak to the nation of Egypt and to deliver them. See, there was a difference between his natural giftedness in leadership and when he tried to do it in his own ability, and then when the grace of God came upon him. And he was. And the Bible says he was the meekest man, meek meaning uh, his strength under submission to the word of God. Really, that's that's what meekness is, is when you have the power to do something, but you submit it to the will and the way of God. Uh, God opposes the proud, but he gives grace to the humble. So if we're trying to do something in our own ability, uh, you know, we're not going to have the grace. And that's where I, I agree with what Pastor Luke said wholeheartedly. You know, it, it, it's, it's a free gift. You're not going to be able to train to get better at something that God's going to grace you at. So with that most example, so even... Where we lack in the giftedness, God's grace is able to get us through there. That graced, it was graced on him. Right? For sure. I, I think that we could say it like this. God will fill in the gaps. Where, where we're yeah. weak, he's strong. Awesome. And that's a perfect way to segue uh, into the next question was, how do we know the difference between what we're good at and what we have grace for or what we're graced for? Yeah, coming from... Coming from the statement where I said, don't let your talent or your giftedness get in the way of your grace, I think that it kind of comes to understanding what is something that you've worked for, because I don't want to mistake something that I've put a lot of effort into practice. I mean, I think of like, there are people in the business sector, in the business world that are just good at or talented at leadership. Like, it just comes naturally to them, but they might need grace 
to be flexible to see somebody else's perspective within their organization or yeah. you know I think of like within a lot of churches like um, musicians they might be gifted towards or gifted at or have a giftedness towards uh, a guitar mm -hmm. or to play the piano but they need grace to be a worship leader to lead a team because that's something that God has to step in and allow you to do so how, how can you know the difference between that I think is one of them it, it, it's we don't want to take work out of it, and, mm -hmm. and I don't want to call grace work. And so I think that that's why there's this dual responsibility of, of um, the fact that you know you have to work hard at life and to do things, but at the same time, there's an area of grace that God will give to you, or or reward you to do those things. Yeah, I, I think that that comes in where we can work together with grace. It, it doesn't mean that we shouldn't do anything. The Apostle Paul says. Uh, I worked harder than they all did, uh, yet not I, but the grace of God that was in me. Right. And, and that's where we, we have to work together with grace. Uh, uh, we do all and God does all. It's a beautiful partnership that, that comes into play. And, and I think that's where you know the difference because you know what you're doing yeah. and you know what you're unable to do. <laughs> you know, I, I can't get the word of God in people's hearts. I know I, I'm, I'm able to teach and preach and, and took classes for speaking in college, but when somebody gets it and the word drops in their heart, I know that's grace. Yeah, yeah that's good. Uh, Pastor Luke, last night, you know, you had a, definitely a tweetable uh, quote there when you talked about, when I'm living in the position of God, I'm living in the purpose of his kingdom. Uh, and that, that really resonated and really hit. Now, um, that brings up the question, finding our purpose. How do we find our purpose uh, in, in our grace, in, the, in, that, in that grace lane, so to speak, if I want to use that terminology um, finding our purpose in terms of that giftedness or grace. Right. There's a lot of stuff out there that, you know, if you really wanted to take some time to do that, you could read books on it and so forth and so on. There's some wonderful theologians that have written specifically on that subject. I think one of the things that I would say is that we we so often, and I know just for me, I'm speaking of my own self, so often I, I want to know what my purpose is so much so that if I don't if I don't live into that, then I feel like I'm wasting my time. Whereas it's not so much about finding out what is my calling or my purpose today so that I don't waste time because I believe that when you're doing something for the kingdom of God, no time is wasted. I mean, think about like Pastor Dan's example of Moses, 40 years in the desert, uh, just learning in shepherd school, you know, that, that's not wasted time, although we might see that. What is important is to say, you know, like we talked about last night was ministry. Oftentimes we want to do something for the kingdom of God or ministry. Ministry is... Um, Ministry is just finding, like what mom said, finding what's in front of you to put your hand to and doing that, starting mm -hmm. somewhere. And I believe it might just be talking to somebody. It might just be stepping out in faith. And, mm -hmm. you know, it may, it may be uncomfortable, it may be awkward, but God gives that grace that enables us to, to, to do things that we could not do on our own. And that's why I say I wouldn't spend so much time worrying about or thinking about or pondering about what is my purpose rather than I would just say, you know, let's step out in faith and just start doing something for the kingdom of God and let God reveal his purpose in you through what you're doing in his grace. I like what Ecclesiastes chapter 9 verse 10 in the first part of the verse says. It says, whatever your hand finds to do, do it with all your might. And again, coming back to Moses, when Moses was speaking to the Lord at the burning bush, he, he says, how am I supposed to deliver the children of Israel? And God says, what's in your hand? Right. And what was in Moses' hand at the time was a shepherd's staff. And he says, with this, I'm going to deliver the children of Israel. Now, when people ask about what's their purpose, oftentimes you're going to find your purpose with what's in your hand. Uh, yes. Some people are, are, uh, have a propensity towards, and maybe that's your, your natural inclination, maybe that's your talent, maybe that's your, your giftedness like we talked about. And I don't want to overlook that as a starting point to purpose. In other words, that could be the path that God is giving you a little leader that says, hey, uh, you're good at singing. Yeah. Start singing. Yeah. You're, you're good at teaching. Start teaching. Uh, maybe you're meant to someday uh, speak to nations and speak to the multitudes, but you start with some children in, in a Sunday school class, or you start with an outreach ministry where you're going to the streets and telling someone about Jesus. Uh, you know, some people have uh, mercy in their hearts for others. That's what's in their hand, and, and they really have a compassionate heart. And that starts with, I'm going to go door to door and ask people if they need prayer, or I'm going to go do acts of service. 
And whatever it is, it is in your hand, I, I mean, I, I think about my dad who, who just likes computers, and that has led him to be an integral part of our food distribution center here at the church, distributing God's goodness to people in need. So that's, that would be a great starting point. Whatever it is you find in your hand to do it, do it with all your might. In other words, do it as unto the Lord. And that, that gives God the uh, ability to steer. You know, a parked car, if you turn the wheels, isn't going to go left or right. Yeah. It's when the car is rolling and already moving that God gets a hold of the wheel and starts turning you. Mm-hmm. And then all of a sudden you can be led and, and look back down the path and say, wow, I didn't realize starting here would lead me to where I am today. Mm-hmm. You know, I didn't set out to be a senior pastor. I just set out to, to serve Jesus. And God literally took me around the world, and I'm sure... Uh, you guys in this room could say the same thing. You know, you just had a heart for the Lord. You started following Jesus, started uh, serving wherever you could, and God is the one who who brought you to where you, where you're at today. It's yeah. it's an amazing journey, and, and it's uh, wonderful. But it starts with what's in your hand. Well, that brings us back somewhat full circle because the the topic or the theme of last night's message was grace for service, and all of this had the idea of yes, there's grace, there's purpose, there's there's giftedness. But all of it is for service, right. for the body, for the church. Any last thoughts on, on that? Well, you know, I think, I think what we have a tendency to do sometimes is we start to think about, like, service as, as a means of what the church does, you know. And, like, service is something that, oh, if you want service to people, my church does that. Uh-huh. And my emphasis last night was, so, it was more of a we need to start thinking out of that, uh, away from that mindset as our, as our culture changes, that people are less apt to to go to a church for service and really i believe that the kingdom message the message of jesus christ wasn't so much like hey if you want service go to my church it was love god with all your heart with all your soul and then the next greatest commandment is right there alongside of that as to love your neighbor as yourself your neighbor that person who's right there with you and so sometimes we think about well i want god's grace to to bring me to a world stage or to a a pulpit or to a ministry position but there are there are times and places for those, and, and, and Paul talks about those being gifts to the church and, and, and means to equipping the church, but at the same time, the church is the body of Christ. The, the most important integral parts of the body of Christ are the people who are at the job, on the, on the job yeah. right now or at home, yeah. working in the grace that God has given That's them. So to speak, not maybe on a pulpit, but to speak into somebody one-on-one over lunch in a genuine fashion that just displays the love of God. Mm-hmm. And to to live our lives with this grace that says, I can't do this. I'm, I'm incapable of it. I'm, I, I can't do it. It's awkward. It's weird. It's, it's uncomfortable. But at the same time, God's grace comes upon me and does, does for me what I can't on my own do. Yeah. So that now I can be a representative of Jesus Christ, not just on a pulpit or in the ministry, but at the job, at, 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 on, on the soccer field, uh, you know, on Saturday morning with my kids or, or wherever it might be. Mm-hmm. To emphasize and to show who we are and who Jesus Christ is through how we live our lives, through utilizing and working through that grace in alongside of what God has given to us, I believe, as a giftedness or a talent through what our, our own hard work. It's, it's a combination hand in hand of the two. Yeah, it's good. All of us are full-time ministers, uh, whether you're paid by the church or not. You are a full-time minister of the gospel of Jesus Christ. As Christians, we are the distributors of God's goodness on the earth. Wherever we're at and wherever we go, whoever God brings in front of us, we are to be the the living, breathing body of Christ that is bringing about his goodness on the earth. And whether that's done through acts of service, through uh, words of love, uh, the gospel preached, um, I love what Pastor Luke said, whether that's at a, at a lunch table, uh, whether that's on the soccer field, uh, at, at the supermarket. Uh, you know, um, I, I've never met somebody who turned down prayer. And, and it's it still to this day, anytime it could be the most staunch atheist. Yeah, yeah. And, and the moment you say, would you like me to pray for you? Their head goes down and they say, bring it on. It can't hurt. And, and that's where the grace steps in. Where, where we can't do it, God can. And I think that's what really this is all about, is in our inability, in our weakness, God is made strong, and God shows himself, and God gets the glory for it. Awesome. Well, thank you guys for your time, uh, for con- uh, clarifying and expounding on these thoughts that we heard, and again, in an awesome message. We are looking forward to our final week of this series and what it has for us. It's been so powerful thus far. Again, thank you. And if you guys have questions out there, please hit us up on Facebook, on Twitter, on Instagram, post in your comments, uh, questions for the podcast, and we will make sure to try and answer those to the best of our abilities. Also, you can send us an email, email at rockchurch.com, and put podcast 
podcast question in your title. God bless you guys. We love you.